Hello reformers and welcome back to a special feature of Freeman. Now, when we left off, we uh, took a bit of an overview of what's going on in the new version. And what we're going to be doing this time around is we're going to be attempting to get to a little bit of a higher state of gameplay. In other words, I'm going to try, if we can, to get into a siege situation. And I don't know. I don't know whether that's really going to happen, but I've done a little bit of, shall we say, cheating. <laughs> there's no. There's no other way for me to say it, really. Anyway, the point is. Uh, I came back into the game, I loaded up my save game, the test version currently has an issue where the save games do not actually get saved properly. So what's happening is your money is getting reset back to 3000. I, I, I guess this could just be an issue that is affecting me, it might just be a bug. Haven't seen anything on the forums regarding this, so it might just be me. But anyway, apart from that, we do have the other thing where if I reload and I load a, load a save, I am then without any money. I, I mean, food. <laughs> yes, money, food. Eh, same difference. Anyway, the point is, I'm without any food. I'm without any money. I do have my troops still. I still have my troops and everything. I still have my... Uh, I actually don't have anything in my inventory. Yeah, I don't have anything in my inventory at, at all, by the way. So there's obviously that as well. So that's primarily the reason why I have cheated basically just to get a little bit of money a little bit of food and to recruit some additional units because that does then give us an idea as to you know what the shall we say mid game i i guess uh, maybe uh, it's not really the mid game i would say because well we're still using armored militia fighters and things like that i did find the fca shock squads and grenadier squad in a nearby uh tavern basically bar so that is actually pretty cool and what we're going to be doing with these guys, we're going to be utilizing a, uh, a couple of... Wait a minute, where's my other... Ah, those sneaky guys are, are hiding underneath that one. Okay, yeah. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to send these guys to be a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more tactical this time around. Because obviously in the previous episode, I'm basically just trying out things here. And I'm not really doing anything too tactical. And uh, this time around, we're going to try and em employ a couple of tactics. So... We're going to try and get these guys to the top of the top of the hill here, and then we'll see what we can do. Now, I have purchased a rifle. Oh yes, this is an I think it's an M4 variant of some kind, and I did purchase a red dot sight on it as well. And uh, oh, I don't have binoculars equipped. How do I uh, how do I change? Ah, there we go. I think I am now semi-automatic, so that's pretty cool. I like that quite a bit more than fully auto. And uh, we're going to see if... Uh, I, I like the map. I like the first, sort, of, sort, of, sort of like more realistic map. I feel like that makes a huge difference. And uh, obviously, I cannot tilt the camera anymore. So these little lines read very much like an accurate map in real life. A, uh, well, a military map, I guess you could say. And we're going to try and see if we can help out our forces here. Now, I have leveled myself up a little bit as well. I think I'm about level 20 four or 25 or something like that and i've basically just leveled up my marksmanship and leveled up my intelligence and then you know a smattering of other points elsewhere i purchased a helmet and i purchased a uh, an armored vest that's basically it and all of this actually wasn't even that expensive so i think you can probably get some decent gear pretty soon pretty soon in the game and uh, obviously i i spoke about the tasks and the, and the various quests and the, the rewards that you would get for these. And while, uh, you know, it might very well be the case that it's going to take quite a bit of time for you to be able to earn anything like that, it is obviously one of those things where... Yes, apparently I'm leveling up every single time I get a kill now, which is a bit of an issue. <laughs> anyway, point is, test version. This is just the test version. I'm obviously not going to be doing this in the full version. It is literally just as a demonstration of what's currently going on in this version of Freeman and what we can look forward to. Now, bear in mind that I did not mention in the previous episode, and uh, hopefully a couple of you saw the pinned comment uh, that, uh, that was on the uh, previous episode where... Basically, Freeman will have mod support, yes. 
mod support is going to be amazing. It's going to be really, really fun to see what the community comes up with. Because we know other games that have mod support have been, well, basically kept alive. They've basically been kept alive thanks to the efforts of the modding communities in them. And I think that is amazing. That's really, really cool. And the developers of Freeman allowing the community to do that is great because, let's face it, not all developers want their communities to be able to mod their games because, well, quite frankly, there's money to be had. You know, there's money to be had. You, they, you know, they can sell map packs. They can sell, you know, DLC that does this, this, and this. You know, they can sell all these different things and that's the reason why some games don't get modding support. Obviously, in the case of indie games, I think I think developers are much more receptive to modding and the modding community in general because they know that mods generally tend to benefit the community and working directly against mods really is just kind of shooting yourself in the foot. I mean, I could shoot myself in the foot, but I can't see my feet right now. So technically, yeah, that's, that's, what's, uh, that's what's happening. Anyway, uh, I'm actually having a whale of a time here right now. Uh, apart from my rant about mods. Yeah, great. Yes, anyway. The point is, is that in general, I feel like the developers have done a great job. Basically, even even saying that they're going to be doing modding, I think is fantastic because I can't, I just can't wait. I hope, I hope they're going to get Steam Workshop support because that's going to make it just instantaneous, basically, for you to be like, oh, look at this. There's a, a mod that introduces my favorite weapon or a mod that in introduces a, a companion that I want to recruit or, you know, a various amount of different customizations and, uh, you know, for example, different armor and, uh, and things like that. That is going to be really, really fun to see. And I can't wait. I really, really cannot wait to find out exactly what's going on with the modding community in this game because I, I I don't know, I mean I have some wishes obviously but I don't know how easy it is going to be to use the modding tools. I'm not a modder myself, I am very very novice, amateuristic about coding, programming, things like that, even modeling and, and things. I have no skills in regards to those things so obviously that is going to be really cool to find out what's actually going on with that, with that stuff. But my wish list basically consists of conversions and introducing kind of different different maps, different campaigns, you know, things like that on a grand scale. And obviously, once the mod tools are released, it is going to take a little bit of time for modding teams to, uh, to actually get familiar with the systems in place and, you know, what they can actually do. And did you just see them get reinforcements? <laughs> I'm actually... How how did that happen? I have no idea how this just happened. Right, we're going to tell these guys to try and flank those other fellows. And I'm actually going to go and I'm going to go and help them. I am going to go and help them as soon as I can. I had no idea that they were, they, they were capable of, of getting reinforcements. I thought we were only killing... Uh, how many did we kill? We were just we were just taking out twenty or so, weren't we? That is, uh, well, that's a bit uh, that's a bit weird. Okay, well, uh, I guess if that's uh, if that's how they want to play it, then that is how they are going to play it. Now, bear in mind that this weapon is, I think, one of the highest muzzle velocities that I could find in the marketplace. And personally, I really love high muzzle velocity weapons because it just makes it so much easier to hit from long range. You don't have to be as, um, should we say, uh, finicky with where you need to aim and everything. You can basically just, you know, point and shoot, point and shoot. And uh, that's that's definitely my kind of thing, especially from long range. I mean, I have done a variety of builds in the past with Freeman, and i got to say that the most fun that I've had is creating a build that is all to do with close range. All to do with close range. So in other words, taking a shotgun, taking an SMG, taking melee weapons into battle with me and trying to do my very best to run around extremely fast, to use agility as my main statistic that I leveled up is definitely 
something that we will want to do again at some point. I obviously would like to see, if at all possible, obviously, you know, Freeman's still in early access, so I'm going to make suggestions as well as the community, of course, and, uh, you know, if they get implemented, well, that's, you know, that's up to the developers, of course, but anyway, point is, what I would like to see, apart from all the wonders of modding, apart from all those things, you know, Star Wars-based mods and, you know, Warhammer and you know, World War II, one, you know, whatever you want to do, basically. You can do all these things, or at least I hope so, you know. I, I, as I say, I don't exactly know what the limitations of the mod support are going to be, because this is in Unity, and I don't, I don't know a lot about the Unity engine as a whole. But anyway, point is, as I was saying, what I would like to do is try to spec into agility and have agility based skills so in other words right now um yeah where's the where's the last enemy oh he's over there great okay so i'm actually just gonna tell everyone to go over there and try and kill him as soon as possible please oh there he is oh never mind he got cut down fantastic all right so there you go we actually did crush those looters after all and we gained some experience we can leave the battlefield and we get all of this wonderful stuff so yeah uh yeah, I'm not entirely sure whether I want to take any of this. Well, I do want to take any of this, obviously, but I want to make sure that we're taking... Well, I have quite a bit of inventory space, as you can see. Oh, actually, I'm almost full. I'm almost full. Anyway, what I was saying, there are quite a lot of intelligent skills right now. So if I were to go to my inventory right now, you can see here, I'm actually level 20... What am I? Level twenty, level 35. Oh, yeah, I'm actually level 35 now because, obviously, of all the, all the kills that I got in that... Uh, in that particular fight. But anyway, let's just improve our agility a little bit more and our constitution, things like that. Anyway, as I was saying, agility-based skills. Most of these are to do with intelligence. So as you can see, cannot exceed third of intelligence. This is intelligence. And I, I know that the medical skills are intelligence as well. Looting, looting is also intelligence. Navigation is intelligence. Inventory is constitution. Instructor is leadership. Prisoner management is intelligence. And commanding is leadership. So what I'm suggesting is maybe what we could have is a couple of extra skills that flesh out the need for maybe marksmanship, constitution, and agility. Personally, what I'd like to see is a skill associated with agility that provides a percentage chance to dodge. And I know that there's a lot of, well, maybe not that much that much controversy about percentage chances and critical hits and things like that. I'm not suggesting critical hits, by the way, because obviously there are headshots already. But the point is, something to give you, or shall we say not to give you, but to give one, you know, uh, who, who wants to do a uh, an agility-based build a little bit more survivability, so you don't necessarily have to spec into constitution. And I think that could be really, really interesting, because let's say I have nine in agility, I would be able to maybe get three points in dodge, if, if the dodge skill is actually implemented, of course. And from there, how much percentage would you think is, is a good amount? I think either 5% or 10% per skill point. I think that's really, really good because that means if, if it's 10%, obviously the skills cap out at five points each and uh, you're gonna need quite a lot in agility to be able to get those five points in dodge. So obviously that's, that's a, a pretty big caveat right there. Anyway, if it's 5% or uh, let's say it's 10%, so you have five points in dodge, that's going to mean that you will then have 50% chance to dodge. A bit much, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's probably a bit too much. So I'm thinking maybe something like 7.5% because then you'll probably get 35% for five points in, in dodge. And this is obviously all theoretical, all theory crafting, all that sort of thing. And that brings me to my next point. If you would like to make a suggestion in the comments about what you'd like to see, and obviously this is, you know, this is just for a, you know, for a discussion. What would you like to see on this skill screen right here? Would you like to see the dodge skill like I would? Would you like to see increased melee damage maybe? So for example, if you spec into constitution, maybe you're going to get increased melee damage because obviously at the moment, uh, 
I'm actually unsure whether you can use a melee weapon at the moment. I think they may have removed melee weapons in this test version for the moment, but you get my point. I think it would be quite nice to uh, to have like a melee skill, a, a dodge skill, and maybe some other things that are tied into other attributes. Because at the moment, intelligence is king. Very much king. And I mean, it's king just literally because it can give you so much more experience, gives you those additional skill points as well. Obviously, marksmanship is very important too. But anyway, let's have a look and see where can I go? Well, I am going to go to Antipil very, very quickly here. And we are hopefully not going to be attacked by those armored marauders. Thank you very much. But yes, I am actually going to go in here because I missed this in the previous episode. I did not see it, unfortunately. But you can just go into the barracks here. It's on the right side. I didn't see that because it was on the right side. I was like, oh, look at this. You know, you can actually just refill your squads for a certain amount of money and then they will be back on their feet. You don't have to wait for them. You don't have to do anything like that at the moment. Obviously, it's just the test version, so maybe it will change as time goes on. So I'm actually going to go into the barracks here, and we're going to get some elite... Oh, yeah, some elite infantry. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Okay, so let's go into our party here. We're going to just reward them a little bit. Did anyone level up? Yeah, these guys leveled up into infantry... Anyone else leveled up? No, everyone seems... Oh, yep, those guys leveled up into Armored Marauders. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, and it has also been confirmed by one of the developers that the squad icons and the squad customization and all that stuff is going to be returning in the full version as far as I'm aware. So there you go. That's pretty cool. Okay, so what we're going to do now is not get attacked by those guys, please. Thank you very much. So what we're going to do is VFA. What, what's the VFA? Uh, oh, Valkyrie female fighters. Okay, well, that's going to be... Oh, oh, I don't even know. They're friendly with us right now, so maybe we don't want to annoy them. Hmm. Do the bandits own anything? Because it, it seems to me like there's no civilian... Oh, this might be... the. These might be the civilians, actually. Ah, oh, that might actually make sense. Do they... Oh, they don't own anything. They don't own anything right now, so that's kind of a shame, isn't it? Because I was actually wanting to attack them, if at all possible. Oh, no, they do own something. They own Lubney over there. Yes, we are going to go to Lubney, and we're going to say hi to them. Because, I, you know, albeit a little bit sad, it is one of those things that I kind of have to do. Because in the more recent versions of Freeman, I found that the Chinivkan Front Rebellion is always the first target you want to attack. Because their units generally are not as specialized as the other factions and they're going to be kind of i'm not going to say easy but they're going to be a little bit easier than your your standard your standard units anyway what we're going to do here there's a discount on med kits that is a bit or a bit foreboding isn't it <laughs> uh are they telling me something are they telling me that i'm going to die here yes probably they are anyway Let's uh, let's go back out here. I, what I would like to do is actually go into the equipment dealer, see if there's anything else here that I might be able to buy, like maybe some body armor or something. There's heavy assault armor here, but I already have armor on. Even though the armor is not that good, it's okay. I think I have a, a decent amount, I suppose. And... Uh, yeah, no, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it. I, I don't really want to... Spend a break the bank basically. Ugh. Oh well, never mind. Okay, so let's do it. Let's attack. All right. So yeah, you can see here that they're actually outnumbering us a little bit. You know what? Actually, <laughs> I've actually just forgotten something very, very important. Ammunition. Ammunition might be useful. So we're just going to buy a little bit more of that. There we go. All right. So now we can leave. And I will be able to go into my inventory, and we can just give myself a little bit more ammunition. I'm actually going to give myself quite a bit more, because I feel like we are going to be shooting at a whole bunch of enemies. So let's see what we can do here. Let's do it. Okay, so the Chinifkin Front declares war on you. Okay, yes, we are going to want to be very careful here. Okay, so this is the first time, of course, that we are doing a siege. And I have... No idea what we're going to be doing. So let's let's have a look here. So now it seems like 
they have, uh, the developers that is, have removed the restriction on how many troops you can actually enter into the battle. So it's just a squad by squad basis now, which in my opinion is great. Because that means that you can just have, I don't know, you can have squads of nine or, or something like that. And then you can just deploy those squads and it doesn't matter how many units you have in each squad. Uh, I, I hope I'm understanding that correctly. Maybe I'm not. Anyway, we are going to be sending in these fellows here. There we go. And well, what are these things here? I don't know what those are. So I guess we're going to be sending some units into that direction. Going to send two squads there. And maybe another one around here. I don't really want to send people in, you know, like super deep into the enemy's territory. Because we are not going to know what is happening then. And it's not really going to be a good 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 time for them at all is it so that seems pretty good to me let's do it I'm in a position. oh oh wow okay wow well, that you know when a game gets updated in such a significant way and you're just looking at the i mean just look at look at this the i don't know it gives so much immersion with the the, the sun shafts that's the word i'm looking for sun shafts they are really I'm cool in. really really cool all right so, yeah, have you also noticed how when I look around, when I look at this and then I turn around, the, the light changes ever so slightly because what's happening there is that the game is simulating how a human eye would actually react to looking into a, a you know, a bright, a bright uh, light source. And in my opinion, that's really cool. I like that. Okay, so let's see if I can do something here. This is going to be very worrying. A bit worrying. Not entirely sure how this is going to go, to be honest. Hello, you're shooting me. I don't know exactly even know where these guys are, so this is pretty bad. I'm going to actually just heal myself real quick. Okay, so they're actually right there. So we need to move these guys over here, and I think these guys can just basically stand there. I think that's fine. Now, what we could do is we could flank them from the side and try and take out this first outpost, which might make sense. So we're actually going to tell them to go and do that. And then these fellows right here, they will just go and be a little bit of a lookout, I guess. And we're going to see if I can maybe help these guys out a little bit. And I'll try and rush with my newfound agility. Yes, my newfound agility might help me out here. Alright, so I'm here. I don't know who's shooting at me. Uh, there's someone around the corner here. Well, there's one down. Very nice. Well, there's another 71 to go. Yes. Is that was someone? No. Wow. Right. Okay. That guy was super heavily armored. Did you see that? That was crazy. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go straight back in there. We're going to go straight back in there. And this time around, we're going to do something just that little bit different. So we're going to attack the first outpost with all our guys. Every single one of our guys. We're going to send some people off to the side there to see if we can get maybe some little flanking action going on. But otherwise, I think we're pretty fine. Now, the cool thing about being able to go back in here is that you can then heal yourself. And then you'll be, you know, back up and running. So you don't actually have to worry too much about uh, having any problems. So I'm actually going to re-equip two of these med kits here. And there we go. All right. I'm going to actually heal myself once again because I do have a maximum HP of about 200 and something. So it would be quite nice to, you know, get that going. All right. I have my weapon. Oh, there we go. Just want to make sure it's actually, you know, semi-auto because the uh, the little icon in the bottom right there does not change when I change the uh, the way it fires. So there's obviously that. Okay, so where are the... Okay, so we are going to go all the way around here. Now, I assume... Oh, look at that. You can actually spawn on the other side as well. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I should have done that. I didn't even I didn't even see that. Oh, okay. Well, it's nice to know that there's there's actually an option to do that because I think that could be really, really devastating if you do it right. 
Anyway, hopefully once we are moving in here, I'm actually just going to move in. Just going to move in and see what's going on here. Huh. I'm actually wondering, can you capture these various points on the map and then have it be a, a somewhat forward base for you so you can actually spawn enemies, spawn enemies, spawn allies. Go, go, go. That seems to be the case. Take that, civilian fighter. Oh no, I'm being shot from all manners of directions. This is not good. Let me, let me run away in a very stylish fashion. Okay, so there you go. We ran away. We are going to need some people to come in here, if at all possible, so let's try and get them to come around like so. There we go. Alright, so that's that's pretty good. I have healed myself. Let's see if there's anyone around here. Is that someone there? No, it doesn't seem like it. Hmm. Well. Tally-ho. Let's do it. Yes, civilian fighters. They are... They are quite, quite good. They are quite good. They are taking cover. They are taking cover. They are knowing exactly where I am once I've shot, I guess. And... I hit, I hit them. I hit them. Okay, yeah, they're, they're reinforcing. They're reinforcing this area. Have you noticed? They are reinforcing this area. I'm only getting 200 experience per kill as well. Bear that in mind. These guys are not high tier units, but yet they have an intelligence about them, even though that one just kind of ran into my line of fire, but that's that's not their fault, you know. I'm just way too sneaky. <laughs> I'm just kidding, obviously. Uh, yes. Okay, so we are actually moving in now, and we are going to be taking some casualties. Oh, okay, okay, hello. I'm going to throw a grenade here, actually. Okay, no one dead. No one dead from that grenade. That, that's kind of disappointing. Okay, so let's have a look here. Can I capture this? Yes, look at that. We have actually captured it. So I, I don't exactly know what that means. Unfortunately, I don't know what that means. So uh, if anyone knows, if anyone knows in the comments, let me know. Let me know what this means, because I think it might mean that enemies can't spawn here. It might mean that we can spawn, it, spawn our own people in here. You know, it might mean a couple of things. So... I, I really don't know what it does actually mean, so hopefully we'll be able to find that out because the possibilities are pretty much endless because I think it could be really, really fun to be able to uh, capture various points on the map. I think that's so incredibly clever of the developers to do that because that means that the strategic layer and the tactical layer of the game has just been expanded significantly because before it was just like oh okay you know you can you can you know take cover wherever you want and you can you know take out the enemy units and you don't have to really worry too much about well the environment you don't have to worry about the environment at all you can kind of just you know mosey on down and see what we you know see what you can do about you know the various enemies on the map but now the possibility is that you have to capture a couple of areas on the map and oh whoa, there's actually a lot of people right here so I'm actually gonna tell tell my grenade to go and say hi oh yeah there we go did you see yes there we are that is what we like to see all right so I'm actually gonna yes I I, I thought that was going to happen I'm actually gonna die but we got an amazing grenade kill just beforehand, and I thought that was really awesome. Okay, so we did end up losing a little bit of everything, but that's that's really nothing. And we did eliminate quite a few enemy units. So I think we, you know, we actually probably would have survived that if I hadn't died. And that's also something that I think a lot of people will want to see 
from Freeman in the future, and that is a battle continuation option. So in other words, you get to, you know, watch the fight play out with your own little camera, you know, your own little free camera that can run around, or should we say fly around the battlefield, and you can watch your own squads fighting the enemy. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, you might be able to also order them around. So it kind of turns into a bit of a real-time strategy game in, in that sense. But I don't know how easy that is to implement, obviously. But otherwise, I think the game is coming around, uh, coming along very, very nicely. And I look forward to the full version. And uh, yeah, I suppose that will be it for this episode of, uh, of Freeman. If you'd like to see more, then by all means, let me know. Otherwise, you can check out the link in the description, and that will take you through to the Steam Store page. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.